I don't actually repeat the same thing. So, and uh, this is also originally uh, proposed by Hirafuji san sitting there. And uh, we introduced this, this system at the APAN. Then so many people got interested in it. That was in 2003. And uh, just the NECTEC people from Thailand wanted to develop a similar thing. So we held a workshop there. And uh, now they have, I don't know, how many field servers now? Thai version. Thousand, yes. Uh, operational. That's a great. Yes. River, yeah. Yeah, one of the very typical one is uh, one of the Thai field server temples. Uh, <laughs> yes, no, not not it's a uh, small. I don't know how you call it, but <laughs> yes. So even in 2003, the Tha one of the Thai newspaper used cyber farming already. It's the Bangkok Post or something, I think. It's uh, an English paper in Bangkok. I, yeah. This uh, building is NECTEC. I don't know if they have changed the building or not, but yeah, <laughs> okay. And that they've been doing a lot of things based on not the exact same system, but just adopted technology to, to develop their own fuel server systems there. And now some of the fuel servers in Lao and uh, yeah. yeah, or something like that. That's a, it's a one of the great progress, you know, accelerated by the APAN Agriculture Working Group here. Then this the topic is a, a topic we are going to discuss this morning. So in during the discussion in the APA agriculture working group, the some, somebody wanted, I mean NRM people or some other people wanted to install this kind of field monitoring system in so-called Imja Glacier Lake. It's a 5200 something, you know. And because of the global warming, they are afraid of the crops, I mean, the flood by something else. So they wanted to monitor those things. So the Nepali and Rim people installed the very, very long distance. Why, uh, okay, so we, this is a, it's a many participants from this project, NREN, Isimot, the guy just made, made a presentation at the, at the opening ceremony. And the NARO, it's, uh, we used to belong to NARO National Agriculture Research Organization of Japan, the KU University, and the APAN JP helped a lot, and, and so on. And also AIT at that time. Yes, on the sand, yes. And uh, it's at this distance, I think uh, two hops, how many hops to, for this distance? F f f three hops, yeah, three hops. Only with Wi Fi. Yes. They're providing this kind of things, you know, they all installed because, of course, no electricity available, no public el electricity. So they just uh, carry those things up there and installed and established a very, very long distance Wi Fi operation. Yeah. And uh, finally, we succeeded to get the images and temperature and meteorological condition in a very high, you know, altitude place. It's one of the first you know, trial for, for human, I think. So now today's the morning session will be you know used for developing the updates of this project because just one year ago, then I mean relaunched. So uh, many of the uh, uh, topics you know introduced during this session will be about this. And uh, actually we are waiting for the Havan who been displaced this time, just uh, he came back yesterday, but he's not here yet. So, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, <laughs> okay I understand. Yeah, so maybe, uh, what shall we do? Maybe, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I stopped the, uh, okay. Uh, 
I, I think uh, you you need to access access Zoom. Switch there. Oh, then so that the remote remote participant also can. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay, uh, so I can, uh, was around to say, uh, about, uh, this topic. And, uh, okay, maybe I. Okay, uh, uh, before I speak, uh, uh, you can join the uh, Hoover or Slido. Uh, to ask any questions for me, and uh, this year I also set up the Slido for me, so you can also join the Slido to ask any questions by maybe my English or by your mother language is all okay, and I will try to answer any questions for you. Okay, and uh, this is uh to to speak about the uh, cultural web service in Taiwan and uh, uh, by my groups. And uh, before I speak, uh, I speak special thanks to Audrey Tang and uh, the Lonely Wong. Uh, they are uh, my good friends for me. And uh, it's special, special, special thanks to Professor Hirofuji and that's me. Uh, they invite me uh, to join this. Uh, and, uh, uh, my work is uh, about the uh, culture and the information crossover. And uh, uh, so I set up a platform is uh, like this. And uh, why I uh, do set up this uh, platform is because uh, Taiwan has wild well variety crops and uh, it's high mountains or it's in greenhouse is many, many, many of the uh, cultivation problems in Taiwan. Okay, so like this is uh, the high mountains and uh, this is greenhouse. The town have very really high mountains or the uh, uh, normal fields. Okay, so this is just a little list in Taiwan, uh, the pest or the disease, just a little list. So it's many, many of the, uh, maybe disease or many the problem uh, in hope. So uh, when farmers miss these problems, they may ask, what is this? And how could I uh, solve these questions or problem? So uh, the first one is uh, I, set up the, I set up the online crop conversion problem uh, diagnosis and the data collection and the various type of agricultural planning data collection and the crop conversion. Correlation problem project is uh, a, a, a expert on like cooper uh, cooperation and uh, the ICN customized. Okay, so uh, when farmers they meet their problems, they will we will to find the farmers to see uh their farm is uh what problems or the farmers they also come to my institute. Uh, to seek any help, and so we will try to uh, find the problems and uh, tell them how to uh, solve. So um, when they come here or we go outside, uh, we will collect their, maybe their lambs or their uh, connect methods or uh, where they plant planting and uh, what the problem occurs from maybe overall, maybe specific blocks or regular shapes. And the uh, uh, printing time, or uh, do you have the pesticide or fertilizer? But um, this uh, data uh, before three years ago is on paper. It's just on paper work, so it's not conductive to share or application and the preservation. It's not so good. So. Um, I uh, uh, designed an online equality form for uh, farmers or for experts to um, 
to view the data. And uh, it's like this, uh, you can uh, uh, update the photos or your, what's your problems. And uh, it have worms. Uh, do you have the pesticides? Uh, many, many of data, it can, it can collect, uh, uh, it can collect. Okay. And, uh, and when we know uh, where the farmers uh, plant the crop and uh, what times the problems occur, it can also show the weather data uh, from the uh, from the open data in Taiwan. The weather data in Taiwan is is open data. So uh, the management it and it and it. Uh, and the environment of different farms is real different. So it's more like a detective job. So uh, this is very important to have a cure and a, a diverse information, data diversification and the data trust. So it's not only to collect this kind of data. Maybe I think uh, the next is to take more and more photos, maybe crops, maybe farms, maybe it, Maybe the environment and the, the videos is who are wrong videos or VR or drone media is and the, the with the data even the greenhouse the data and the expert the data maybe also need to collect from social media the iNaturalist or maybe the AI or chat GPT four five six version. So uh, this is uh, a show is about uh, when I go to uh, uh, tomato farms and uh, to 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 see their problems and I use the drone to take the 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 environment from the farms and uh, uh, the tomatoes in the node is uh, grows too long so when I use the drone I can see the edge and the growth on the greenhouse and uh, it's short. The farmers is do not wash their greenhouse, so the sunlight is not enough for them. So I can tell the farmers from the drone. I take the I take the photo, and the, your greenhouse is not so clean. And uh, this is a farm field pro, uh, on a rice, and I also. Take the drone photo, and uh, this is the photo toxicity. Okay, so when I get so many uh, data, so what's the next? Oh, the next is maybe some problems I don't know. So I ask different experts for advice, maybe by email or social media. But uh, the waiting farmers, they also keep the problems. Maybe one day, maybe two day, maybe a weeks, and uh, the problem maybe more and more big. So it take too much time. So expert discussion, why discussion online, and uh, by the cooperation. So uh, we create a cooperation interface to learn and uh, provide many uh, kinds of data to learn for reference. Uh, it's like first. Okay, the this is uh left is the the equality form, and the right is expert group cooperation area. So it and uh, it's the reference for expert, maybe the weather, maybe management technology, to learn uh for the cooperation, and uh, sorry. And it's also come by a variety of different reference to them. And uh, the cooperation may be like this. It's one pot, uh, one project, the tomato project, and the promoter uh, maybe speak, uh, I have these problems and uh, uh, we need to, we need to discuss. And uh, the join A, maybe A professor or B, the, the, the expert and the, uh, sorry. They discuss each other online, and uh, seems is the phytophthora disease on the tomato. So, uh, it finally it can provide the the the, 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 
a diagnostic result and advice on the pest control. Maybe all of these data collect can for AI or for machine learning to uh, to practice the machine. And uh, okay, after collaboration, the next is what uh we in Taiwan we also call, uh, tell the farmers uh, is ICM is important not only use pesticides. Okay, so when experts or me try to tell farmers this is so important to uh, IPM or ICM, but the IPM or ICM's uh, information is uh, include the fake news or misinformation. So it requires a specific knowledge. So farmers always say, no, no IPM or no ICM. We need just tell me what pesticide work. So I think it needs to uh, get a professional research result and uh, divide into different data contents. So I tell the experts, I tell the, the experts uh, why it's so important to the data organization and the classification. Uh, it's like this. Maybe this part, maybe this part is for farmers and uh, this is for experts and this identification for pesticides. But uh, the experts say this is uh, uh, important, but it takes too much time. So, uh, me and uh, my group uh, do ourselves. So this is the print protection and uh, the ICM data to deconstruct to the many, many of kinds of data. And uh, it's included by the weather data in Taiwan, growing period, pesticide information, and the crop management technique and the map data. Uh, even the uh, sticky, Tab also include. So it's a reconstructed data. It's like a lychee and the growth period times and the uh, IMS on past the whole method and the more information. Okay, this is like the construct data looks like. And uh, I also do the data visualization uh, on the way the data is and comparable with the data from five or 15 years, maybe uh, this year's and uh, three years ago and the 10 years ago's data can be comparable and uh, also link each other to see the crime change. Oh, this is the Taichung, Taiwan Taichung's crime change, the weather data. So it also can choose the management method for any kinds of farm, maybe my farm needs the, the one, two, three method for me is good. And uh, the, the other ones, the farm, maybe these two, just okay. So any farms or any area, any areas, uh, the management methods can choose what they need. And also it's a uh, different farm is a different growing uh, period. So you can see, uh, we also design the uh, period you can change maybe earlier or maybe later to set up the, the, the uh, how to uh, management. Okay, so it also can detail for management skill to see uh, how to management. And it also can use um, the chemical control and uh, you can select the pesticide. Okay, maybe from the mechanism or you can see uh, what kinds of the pesticide data you need to choose uh, what pesticide you need. Okay, you can also can uh, calculation the dosage uh, for farmers use. Okay, so it's finally can customize the cultivation calendar for crop management. And uh, it also can uh, do from the expert to take a map 
and uh, this map is uh, in on the the management method. So for the, maybe the new farmers or maybe the farmers who do not have uh, uh, do not have enough skills, so they can uh, you see uh, from from there maybe the farm land to to choose the which IPM or ICM what they need. Okay, so it's the each person maybe have different backgrounds. So ten people maybe ten different ma management perspectives. Okay, so I think the agricultural cultivation management is depend on what they need and the, which uh maybe someone have uh, for for money or someone not so many money so they can choose which method they need. Okay, this is uh the the overview of my uh the platform is connected with the data or the, the design of curve management methods. Okay, so this is corporation data can be for farmers or can be for experts or maybe next time to AI. Okay, so I also seek in the various kinds of cooperation. Okay. And uh, I also need to think the GLV. Uh, everyone can search the GLV is the Taiwan's the tech community. Uh, it's very good, and uh, it's also many uh of countries also join the GLV. Okay, thank you. We have two. <laughs> this one also works. Yes. Yeah. Okay. My name is Mitsuru Kamen. Um, I'm from the Ministry of Agriculture and the Forestry Fisheries of the Japan. <laughs> and um, thank you very much for the useful um, presentation. And uh, my comment is, uh, well, this method may uh, cooperate with uh, the uh, GAP, Good Agriculture Practice. Uh, yeah. So maybe if you, um, I, I'm wondering uh, uh, which is the situation of the collaboration. And if not, uh, I like to, uh, you, uh, and I like to mention that uh, you may uh, contact with the uh, Department of the Agriculture uh, and well. Um, in charge of GAP. GAP is uh, kind of an ISO for in, uh, uh, agriculture version. Okay, thank you very much. I think that, uh, this is uh, important to join the GAP or to the uh, GGAP or the uh, Japan's the TA, Japan's JGAP. Yes. And, and the, J gap and Asia gap. J gap. Okay. Taiwan also have a T gap. So I think uh it it, it uh it's really can join uh in uh, maybe GIP the system. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jan. So now I would like to invite Adan to give. You can you can give two talks, okay, continuously. Yeah, he has he has two. Oh, okay, yeah. please. So that that should be <coughs> updated. That the one. Oh right, 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 right. Okay. Only one. Yeah. This one. This one. Anyone? Yeah, okay. So, so, Padang, you have only one. 
Yes. Okay, so you, you, you can take your time, I mean. <laughs> okay, very good. Yeah, good morning, everybody. And first of all, I would like to apologize for being late. Uh, uh, today I'm here to talk about networking in Highland. Uh, uh, this is one of the pictures that we took uh, almost four days back in Everest region. Uh, this is Mount Everest, uh, and, and we took this picture at the height of uh, 5,300 meters. We, uh, we are doing an Asia Connect project. Uh, to connect this uh, beautiful Himalayas and its community with the world uh, over the broadband connection. Uh, this is the, uh, I'm also part of ANDRIN. This is my organization, Center for Information and Communication Technology for Development. Basically, we are the not-for-profit organization working on the ICT development and empowerment for the community. And, and as uh, most of us know, uh, this is one of the ambitious projects that we've been doing, uh, on, uh, by, funded by Asia Connect. And uh, basically, the, uh, uh, I'm here to highlight a little bit more about this project, because like it's, uh, it's been connected uh, the different communities in the highland areas, okay, mostly in the Himalayan region where uh, people are lack of good proper infrastructure. So I'd like to take one slide uh, to uh, update the floor about our project. Our project is effective broadband solution for bridging the digital divide. It's a kind of pilot project uh, as for community-based ISP and services. And, and the objectives are facilitating research communities and developing partners with relevant real-time data. Because, like, since uh, Himalayan region is very sensitive, and because of the climate change and other stuff, okay, it's very hard to. I mean, the the research community need more data um, in the real time. That's why uh, we are trying to facilitate over through this project. And the second one is providing broadband internet services to the rural communities, including government, non-government agencies working in the project area. Because like, since it's a very remote area and, and the internet facility is not that stable, so that we, are, I, we hope that the, such kind of project will in, in, enhance and enable the, the different agencies to get the data and, and also the internet services. And the third one is to leverage the use of ICT tools for human development, telemedicine, online education, and e-governance-based services. So the, this is the project area. Uh, our network runs from 3,440 meters to 5,300 meters. So this is very challenging in terms of geog geography, location, and in terms of uh, remoteness. And, uh, and thank you for providing me this opportunity uh, to be part of this agriculture. Uh, so far, I had a different perspective on the uses of ICT, but uh, this time, like when I went to the project area, I had different perspective. So I tried to collect data from the local agency, including the local government, but too much, uh, but to my surprise, I didn't get any data. That's very interesting because I, I, I told them what is happening here. And this, they told me that they are much focused on the tourism sector because Everest region is one of the world's top tourist spot. Okay. So they told me that we're just focused on tourism. And then I said, why? I mean, it has so much of potential for agriculture products. Okay. So, I mean, that's why I was so, so surprised. That's, that's why I put my slide, no data available. <laughs> so I think with the, with the help of uh, Enrin communities and rent communities, maybe we can implement some kind of system to get more data for the agriculture analysis and so on, climate change and meteorological things and stuff like that. So uh, this is what I learned from the ground. And as I, as I told you earlier, I was more focused on ICT tools, but this time I have a different vision uh, of that area. So this, these are the few lessons that I learned from my recent visit. 
Okay. Uh, uh, effective communication among farmers and stakeholders for knowledge sharing and discussion in local language, contributing to agriculture diversification and even economic activities. As, as I updated you, like most of the people in, people in that area, they were much focused on tourism activities only. And so I think it, the, the land, the land that the poses have uh, more agriculture opportunities as well. So that like when we provide the good broadband and uh, the networking facilities, that will definitely help the farmers and the person who are living there uh, to, to talk about the, the, the crop that they grow, the potato that they grow, and the berries that are available in Highland. Okay. So I think uh, the effective communication among farmers and stakeholders for knowledge sharing, that's why they can share the knowledge over the internet. Because it's very difficult to, for them to walk from one point to another point. That takes us almost hours and hours of walking. Okay. So that, I think the Saskanya broadband and the networking in Himalayan help the local community to uh, communicate more effectively. And the second one is affordable internet connectivity or communication helps to empower the farmers. Okay, they are pretty much isolated right now. Even then, uh, even the person who want to do farming in their little land, okay, so due to the unavailability, unavailability of effective communication, they are deprived of uh, information and what they are going to do. Because like, so far they are relying on the indigenous uh, technology, uh, and and the process only, yeah. And as a stakeholder to uh, intensify agriculture production, mainly of vegetable and rice. Because like recently, I have been to a place called Jumla, which is uh, in the uh, western part of Nepal. And uh, as I was talking to Niumi and San, I mean, there is a particular uh, rice cultivar. It's called Jumli Marsi, which is available only in that place. Uh, I, I don't know about the rest of the world, but it's not available in Nepal, right? <laughs> so, I mean, such so kind of, you know, the networking uh, with the effective broadband services will help them to exchange ideas and, and get in more ideas from the expert around the world. Okay. And obviously, the IoT uses to know data on climatic condition, meteorological condition, and soil conditions. Uh, I have uh, taken a few interviews of the local farmers, which I will be sharing with you uh, in one of the slides. So I came to know that because uh, they need data on climate, they need need data on meteorological conditions, so that the 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 product that they grow will be more uh, effective and more productive in days to come. And and uh, recently, uh, it's very interesting to know that. Now, in every region, there was no snowfall during the winter. Okay, so when I went there last week, and we had snow, which was very unusual. Okay, and because of not availability of snow, the ground get frozen, and they are not able to cultivate anything. Okay, so if the farmers over there, or if the if the interested person who can who is willing to do farming in that area, they should be knowing what is happening with the climate, what is happening with the meteorological condition. Okay, so maybe we can use the, some kind of IoT devices, sensors. Uh, so that's that's uh, one of my uh, when I visited there, and of course the broadband network to interact with experts to strengthen local institutions and active participation of local farmers, and and because the area is more focused on tourism, okay, and even the person who want to do farming, who want to uh, uh, you know grow uh, rice or potato or any other berries, uh, they need to learn more about the product and the processes. That's why we also need the broadband network there. And related technologies or applications to have data on health of plants and livestock. Uh, my colleague Nina will be more talking about the livestock. But what I found out that, I mean, uh, in the picture you can see the yak. They are called yak and nak. And they are the local animal being used for uh, dairy product and even for transportation. Okay, And, and those animals, the, uh, uh, during the non-tourist season, they go to even high land, like 5,000 meters and uh, even uh, above 4,000 meters to get grass and the local herbs. 
Okay, so and and the person who is living down below around three thousand area, sorry three thousand meters, they are not aware where their animals are. Okay, and and in those areas, the snow leopard is very much you know uh, trying to get yak uh, as their food. Okay, so maybe we can use some kind of sensory technology to track the yaks and even you know uh, there's lots of things that we can do there. Yeah. And and lastly, the exploration of vegetation for harsh and rugged geography to help prevent landslides and soil erosions. Uh, in my other slides, I'll be showing you the area which is very much vulnerable to the landslide and soil erosion because of the uh, its glacier nature. Right. So if we can use some kind of networking device or sensors or IoT devices track the movement of you know the soil or even the land it will be very much helpful for the people living in such harsh uh, areas uh, uh, this is kind of the the, the interview i took uh, um, in my visit okay it's not showing there Oh, it's not showing in the screen. It's running, yeah. Ah. It's not sharing the same screen. Uh, this place is called uh, Pangboche, uh, which is almost at 4,000 something meters. Okay, then you can see the beautiful mountain of Mount Amadablam. So he belongs to this uh, field where he, he wants to grow potato in a large scale so that he can sell it to the tourist and the, to, to, to the uh, hotels in the local area. Sound. So he's the person, okay, and I took the interview in Nepali language, but unfortunately due to unavailability of time, I couldn't translate that in. So what he's trying to say is, so he wants to grow more potato rather than just relying on his hotel business, I guess, but he doesn't have any, you know, the, the state of the art uh, technology or the knowledge to enhance his uh, potato growth. That's what he's complaining about, and he's the same person who told me about the the snow. Because like, if there was a snow uh, during the uh, season, that would have uh, that would have made the land more fertile and more moist, so that he can grow more potato. But due to unavailability of snow, the land was frozen, and this year he couldn't harvest any potato. And another interesting thing that I found during my recent visit is that area is uh, this area is very much potential for a, a different kind of berry. It's called sea buckthorn. Okay. Uh, uh, before my visit, I had n no idea of this berry. It's, it's a kind of wild berry. Uh, with uh, orange color, okay, and uh, its botanical name is uh, Hippophyramnoids. I got it from the Google. 
Okay. And, and the fruit is very rich in vitamin C and along with vitamin A, B1, B2, and B6. I also got information from the Google. And the fruit is basically used for jam and juice, whereas the seed can be used to extract oil for aromatic oil. Okay. So this is a kind of, uh, I, I don't know about the cash crop, but I think in my, uh, when I uh, communicate with the local farmer, he told me this can be used as one of the cash crop. Okay, and, and the livelihood of the local community can be increased by selling such kind of berries in the market. Okay. And uh, those plants are widely seen at the riverbanks of Imja River. And Imja is a kind of lake uh, that's in below the mountain called uh, Chuk, uh, um, Imja and Mera Peak and Island Peak. Okay, so it's, it's a glacier lake. So when the glacier melts and it forms, uh, it flows in terms of river. So such kind of berry can be found uh, very easily in the uh, bank of the river. Okay, then, okay, uh, that's it. I had taken interview, which is again in Nepali. No. So that's again the barren land where you want to, uh, you know, uh, do plantation for sivak throng. Okay. So so far the land is very much barren. Okay, and it's not being used effectively. Now these are the local uh, shrubs. Okay. So he's a local entrepreneur who's into different activities, and he also. Uh, uh, um, collecting the uh, pure water uh, from the Himalay and processing it as the uh, uh, kind of mineral water okay, locally. It's a local reservoir. <laughs> Uh, so apart from the, uh, I also met this uh, old fellow uh, who is a porter, okay, and he was trying to explain me the expo importance of communication uh, for his livelihood and, and for the agriculture activities that he's been doing, okay. So uh, this old fellow uh, during uh, the season, we call it season time because there are lots of tourist flow. During that season time, he works as a porter. But when he's not working as a porter, he he loved to have, you know, some kind of agriculture activities in his field. Uh, so there are many examples in such such kind of area. Okay. Uh, there are a few interesting pictures I took uh, during my visit, and and as you can see, there are lots of. Uh, since uh, field servers installed here, but they are not, uh, uh, they are being uh, are governed by the the project called the Pyramid Project, uh, which was supported by the uh, Italian government long time back. Okay, so, but, uh, you know, the data are not available. So that's, uh, it's confined with sort of kind, some kind of community only. Okay. So uh, this uh, field service, they are situ I mean, the sensor technology, the, the equipment are located in the height of around 4,900 meters. Okay. Okay. So there, there are many things that we can do over there. Okay. They are not available for public. Otherwise, like, I would have get some data <laughs> from the local community. <laughs> No, not sending out. Okay, so this is very interesting. Okay, so I mean, uh, when I say about the landslide and erosion, I am talking about this the area, this area. Okay, maybe we can have some kind of you know the sensor technologies to 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 prevent the soil erosions or even landslides, and such kind of land can be used effectively for agricultural uh, purposes.
This is almost at uh, 4,900 meters. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks. So, any questions? Very interesting talk. Yes, please. Before, now, you, uh, now you're using Wi-Fi. Before, there should be a satellite link. So there used to what, be, what wrong with that? Uh, satellite link is very expensive. Ah, okay. And the common <laughs> people and the... Uh, latencies. All right. 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 Uh, yeah. I like to say still. Yeah. Namaste to all. I'm uh, Nina Amate Gurkhali. I work in uh, Nepal Agriculture Research Council. I'm a breeder, breeder basically. So I, I'm very much uh, uh, privileged and I'm very happy to be here. This is the first time for me to be in this uh, community. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. When I see all, you know, uh, the uh, the scope of this uh, 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 meeting, I say like. You know, we yeah we are so much rich in the uh, yeah the biodiversity, not only for the plants, also for the animals. So, uh, yeah, with the help of this community, I, I I can see that you know we can do some work in agriculture in Nepal. You know, especially livestock development when you are going that height, that means you know, uh, it, there are it is basically it is the no no tree zone, right? So in kind of that kind of places, you know, when uh, he saw the uh, the uh, the uh, the yaks there, and uh, you know, very recently, very recently, you know, we lost like almost like a thousand yaks, and and at the same time, you know, we are losing um, in the population is declining, and and uh, we lost like thousand. Uh, land, uh, last last year because of avalanche, you know, and uh, yeah, we can use this technology to make people aware of you know in an advance like uh, like like uh, like that. So, and it not only helps the uh, the animal as sources, like it also you know, because it, uh, it uh, the animals in the higher altitude they are in the you know they are uh, undergoing and they goes in the migration in different seasons. They, as he mentioned, like yeah, sometimes they go up in the uh, in in the hills. Sometimes they come down. So in the in the in that course, you know, not only the animals they they have a problem, but also the herders, you know, and uh, the people who are you know taking those animals from one place to another, they they are also having the problem because of you know they, they might get sick, and sometimes they also get uh, lose their their lives, right? So yeah, I, I can see that uh, plus you know, and I can see we can work together to you know uh, to highlight a livestock sector in in Nepal as well. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, very good to know the you are thinking of a kind of application of this kind of the optical fiber network. So usually in this particular case. The people always, always mention about the kind of application for tourism or something else, but you know, we should use it for the farmers and the local people. And uh, in this case, you know, this is a very, very touristic place, but we should think that how we can apply this kind of technology to other rural places in India. So this should be a kind of a, a first step to, to understand how this kind of optical fiber network can, can, can help them. So, yeah, we should, I think we should promote the disposal in that way as well. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah, you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. But by the way, do you know the, do you know the, the, the yield of the potato up there? Yield. Yield. Yeah, actually, uh, actually, you know, I'm, I'm uh, my my senior uh, who is working in the potato sector. Yeah, he was supposed to come, but you know, because of some uh, a certain, you know, uh, this meeting, uh, he has to attend that one so that he cannot come. But yeah, actually, 
the yield uh, actually I because uh, the yield must be not not that high because of uh, because it takes long time for for the potato to go but the uh, the quality of the potato is really really nice and it's very popular if uh, people uh, we can get from the you know the potato from higher altitude you know they really want to pay more for that one okay. sounds very good thank you so, so let me invite uh, yahuji san the presentation it's going to change the seat to the screen just throw it in i think no no that's fine all right now okay okay so i'd like to uh explain our studies uh, about uh, 15 years ago we deployed uh, sensor networks using a field servers and uh, satellite uh, connectivity in Himalaya. Uh, uh, already, uh, Neil Mesan uh, explained, so I skip this part. Um, uh, the field server in Imja Glacier Lake was disconnected soon, <laughs> 2007. Uh, so, we would like to know the reason. So again, we tried to deploy uh, field servers in uh, the, uh, the area. So this is the second deployed field servers, uh, 2000, uh, 2008, not 2008. <laughs> so, so next year, it was uh, uh, good. Uh, five field servers, we could get uh, this kind of good pictures and uh, we could simultaneously get uh, environmental information. Uh, however, uh, the delay station was uh, broken for strong wind. So uh, the lifespan was only uh, half year. So I, on that time, uh, time I uh, recommend uh, energy harvest is a very big problem to maintain this kind of a system. So, uh, uh, five, uh, 15 years have passed since then. Uh, finally, we could uh, develop the good technology using AI. Uh, on that time, we, uh, collect, we could collect a lot of image data and the environmental condition data. So by using recent, we can uh, evaluate uh, plant growth in Himalaya area. It's a Namche Bazar uh, potato farm. So uh, we easily we can recognize there are uh, diversity of plant growth. So uh, only at only taking pictures we can evaluate plant growth easily. So maybe I think I believe ChatGPT directly understand. We don't need any experts. Directly AI can deploy uh, this kind of. Uh, information. Okay, so a few servers uh, have been changed dramatically uh, for the uh, 15 years. Uh, commercial IoT devices are very popular and cheaper. So field servers is also uh, dramatically changed. Already we don't make uh, original uh, circuit board by only by purchasing uh, such as M5 stack and camera we only uh, order on Amazon directly we can use uh, this kind of camera uh, and as for weather station for example net net atomo uh, weather sensor is available on Amazon so only ordering uh, this kind of IOT devices uh, Himalaya, uh, people in Himalaya uh, can utilize uh, information and the co uh, correct data quickly so our uh, theme for such is changes. Uh, large field server can carry desktop devices. So um, uh, this, field, uh, this is a kind of a, a, a waterproof uh, case uh, PC. So it can carry a Wi-Fi router, uh, IoT devices, camera, small PC, you, NAS, SSD, it is anything uh, for uh, desktop devices, uh, 
computer server can protect the uh, severe environment for that devices. However, the, our consumption is recently 44 watt. So to provide 44 watt continuously is very difficult in uh, such area. So we have to uh, construct a good energy harvest system. So uh, for 15 years, we uh, developed a, a scale, quick and scalable energy harvest uh, system. Uh, it, this energy harvest system, we, we named it uh, solar cubicle. It's easy, compact stuff. Uh, we, quickly, we can set up. And uh, the, uh, the weight is uh, heavy enough uh, against a strong wind. And the cost of performance if the bigger than one is the cheaper. So we had to construct a big one. However, in Himalaya area, uh, porter can carry up to 10 kilograms. So that is a very uh, difficult problem. And um, for a cubicle, the efficiency is very good. Uh, four days, it can generate uh, electricity. So if we deployed this uh, system in Himalaya, uh, local farmers can use uh, more data and the uh, load band. So I, oh, just a moment. So um, I uh, try to find uh, a situation in uh, around Everest camp, base camp. Uh, easily, we uh, I could find many uh, examples of uh, solar panels. So everywhere they are using uh, this kind of solar panels. But I think this is not sustainable by storing wind. Uh, easily, it can be broken. If, so our solution is uh, uh, small solar cubic. The weight is uh, or, or, almost uh, 50 kilograms. Uh, Porter cannot carry it. Uh, but this power is not so uh, big to uh, drive big field servers. Only small IoT devices are available. And uh, uh, only to maintain Wi-Fi connectivity, access point consume a lot of energy. So by my calculation, we need a, a middle-sized solar cubicle. The it is 300 kilograms. So we have to carry. <laughs> and I recommend this one. This one is the best one. Best, uh, the cost of performance is cheapest. Yeah, but uh, each part is some, someone is uh, two, 20 kilograms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, as a cost of performance, uh, this one is best. But the weight is uh, 600 kilograms. So we have to uh, solve this problem quickly. So um, this is examples of transportation method. In United States, we already tried this mission uh, with Prashansa. <laughs> so in Iowa, uh, we ordered for uh, I ordered uh, many components, uh, solar panels on Amazon. So directly we can uh, receive uh, uh, solar panels and other components, so we can construct there. The transportation cost is free. So I imagined this service in Himalaya. So <laughs> I think uh, I like this one. Uh, <laughs> this transportation is very useful for Himalayan area. However, this is a joking video for April Fool. <laughs> Japanese uh, guy uh, make this video. But I think Amazon will uh, provide this kind of uh, service in near future, I expect. So uh, another option, we have to find uh, transportation method. Um, uh, uh, this, this is a power assist suit. suit with the oxygen generator, so we can carry. Um, but but the, maybe the so weight is up to uh, 20 or 30 kilograms. So, uh, so 
um, we bought a walking robot after the Himalaya mission uh, 15 years ago. I, I, we ordered this XRX robot. Uh, it works, but the payload is only 20 kilograms. And uh, the most uh, difficult problem is this uh, product is discontinued. Already we cannot purchase. So we, uh, we are now finding another way. That is a drone. Big drone can carry uh, up to uh, one, one, one bigger one is uh, tw up to 200 kilograms. So it's, it's good. It's good. <laughs> so the uh, height is up to 6,000 meters. So easily we can carry uh, many uh, components uh, to the Himalayan uh, base camp. And uh, another problem is to get uh, fund to maintain this system. So we have to find good applications. Um, one is the metaverse contents with NFT and Web3 permanent storage. Uh, recently, we can purchase uh, this kind of 300, 360 uh, VR camera. Already I have that. But uh, the quality of image is not good yet. And another one, a Canon EOS R5. This is very expensive. And I evaluated this one. But still, the quality of image is not so good. Uh, last one, an Insta. 360 Evo. This is best. Cost performance is very good, very small. However, this is disconnected, uh, discontinued. We cannot buy. So uh, the, this kind of product is changing quickly. So we have to uh, continue finding good VR cameras. And for application, another application, it's a kind of uh, AI services. Uh, in in first mission, we could collect a lot of image data. So uh, um, my colleague find a very strange something, human-like figure. <laughs> so uh, when I looking at this human-like figure, I imagined this one, Bigfoot. And uh, our uh, member of our team find a big footprint. So there is something interesting. Uh, uh, animal. So this kind of uh, very attractive. So it can be a good business model. Okay, so conclusion, uh, AI Metaverse Web3 based services will be available in field with high speed optical communication, large field servers and solar cubicles. And two, uh, field servers are not mass produced uh, IoT devices, but custom made integrated IoT devices. So it's very expensive. And commercial IoT devices are recommended for uh, normal applications only to collect uh, agricultural data quickly. And the third, quick, rugged, easy, scalable energy harvest and advanced tra transportation are key for developing uh, the Himalayan region. When I stayed there, uh, at night it was very cold because of a sort of energy. So uh, they need uh, more energy, okay? Thank you, thank you very much. The heat talk is always always interesting. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> any questions and comments, please? Okay. Hmm. Uh, thank you, Irafuji san. It highlighted more uh, on my knowledge. Okay. Uh, one thing I would like to contribute is that uh, recently we found out that the porters can carry up to 25 kilo uh, up to the base camp. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's the that's the restriction that the local government has made over the porter. And but very interestingly, uh, we saw two porters carrying 107 kilo up okay. to Nancy Bazaar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Very good so solution. I think, <laughs> I think with the proper uh, arrangement and rearrangement of the solar cubicles, mm -hmm. so we can uh, 
uh, can find out the very you know strong porters who can carry the payload okay up to that okay mountain. that's right yeah. <laughs> thank you even even the japanese climbers get maybe 40 kilograms i used to carry 40 kilograms in the winter yes we need to carry that, that amount to go to the mountains and in winter But it's better to have that kind of uh, assisting things anyway. <laughs> it's made the people unhappy anyway. Any questions and comments? Yeah. Is there any chance to use the wind, wind turbine to combine with the solar panel? No. Hello. Ah, wind, wind, wind turbine. Yes, I have yes. tried, but uh, it's very heavy, and uh, to fix the uh, wind windmill is very difficult in such area. To only to dig a hole, it's not easy. Okay, sure. Sure. I have tried, <laughs> but the the uh, the river. Is a uh, two thousand meter below. <laughs> no, not that much water up there. All ice. Yeah, but with maybe with the small wind turbine, uh, five uh, hundred uh, watts, because uh, I think the wind is very windy in the, that area. Excuse me. Who, who who's speaking? Oh, this is Basuki. I'm from Indonesia. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, though we can explore the, the uses of wind power, but the problem is that uh, we have the very strong wind mm -hmm. at the hilltop, or I can say the mountain top over 4,000 meters. And in order to get the power stored in that area and down, bring it down to the community is another hassle. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, though it's a good solution, but due to the, the, the terrain, due to the, you know, the, 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 the height of the mountain, it's not, I, I don't think it will be much practical. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and as Hirafuji-san said, we can definitely explore the, the hydropower solution. And and the only problem is bureaucratic because like the area is UNESCO heritage site. <laughs> so whatever we do, even to construct a small hut, uh, you have to take permission from the local government and including the Sagarmatha National Park. Mm -hmm. And it's it, it's a very long time. Uh, it's a time consuming process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the last speaker of this session will be uh, Professor Fukui from Chubu University. Fukui Sensei, can you? Yes. Okay. Uh, I want to share the my slide. Please let. Okay. Share the slide. Okay. Okay. So it's like so. Are you see? You can see my slide. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for making a chance to make a presentation. I am now in Japan, Sakayama City. I do want to go there, but uh, unfortunately I have another work. So I, unfortunately I making a remote access. I want to talking about uh, my presentation is uh, introducing uh, digital arts technology to help of uh, sustainable development goal, I think. 
So everybody knows that uh, these three years uh, we are affected by infectious disease. So it is a very interesting uh, kaitsun in 2020s. It is the first stage of infectious disease. So in the beginning, uh, the coronavirus and uh, us is uh, fighting that. But uh, out of the ring, uh, there was uh, big boxes uh, uh, were in uh, climate change. So uh, we understanding that the last three years, I think uh, uh, we are riding with the same spaceship as but uh, how to operate that the spaceship is an important thing. In that case, we'd like to bridge the data gap or the adaptation to the climate change issues, for example. So everybody knows then that uh, recently disaster force is uh, rising. And also the uh, our capacities, resilience capacity is going down. So this gap is now widening. So we need to the mitigation and also adaptation to bridging this gap. So I think uh, I want to introduce the concept of digital us. I want to know that uh, how many person already hear about the digital health concept. But uh, this concept is firstly introduced uh, ex-vice president of the United States at Goa, showing that uh, digital health is a multi-resolution, three-dimensional representation of the planet. It is one of the collaboratory, not only for scientists, but also students. We need the user interface browsable 3D version of the planet. So at the earlier stage in NASA's, there was a digital health office. So there is a lot of digital resources and also by using the interoperability, we can use or reaching of any resources in the world. So it is a very interesting and uh, variable concept. So we are forming that the International Society for the Digital Arts 2006. So uh, we would like to apply the kind of technology to the high mountain area like a Himalayas. For example, the, the, I take these photos from the point of 5,000 meters. In the center, 800 high mountain Macau, you can see that. By using a digital technology like uh, shuttle radar model project, and also as a satellite optical image. So you can see that uh, in the center, uh, big lake, that is uh, glacial lake because of the global warming is happened. The glacier is melting and at the end of rain site, th that kind of a big lake is happening. So by using uh, digital technology, we can make in such kind of uh, three dimensional viewing in the world, everywhere we can see that. So uh, Hirafuji-san and Ninomiya-san already talking about our uh, project We'd like to make an uh, observation of uh, this kind of a glacial lake and to setting up uh, early warning system to avoiding a uh, disaster. That is our target in the early stage of 2008. So as you know that the uh, glacial lake is in Himalayan region, there are a lot of uh, such kind of glacial lake. So last year, you may know that in Pakistan, uh, already happened in the glacial lake outburst flooding. So we need uh, adaptation of such kind of uh, glacial lake issued, and also watershed management is needed. 
This uh, chat is uh, our collaborator of Ishmund, who speak in the keynote speak in this uh, conference, I think. Another aspect of this region is uh, Himalaya is one of the uh, active fault zone. Like there is a lot of uh, threat fault in the Himalaya mountain range. So the, by using uh, geospatial information, so where is uh, such kind of uh, active hold that is uh, overlay in a terrain model and also overlay at the uh, population uh, settlement, for example, that. And this is another example of uh, geospatial information, nighttime light from the satellite. So it is corresponding to the uh, population side, I think. So we are now making an analyzing of, uh, by using AI technology. So we are uh, mapping of uh, global nightlight intensity in the world like this. It is almost corresponding to the uh, economic activity and also population settlement. And also, so we are much concerning about ecosystem management. In that, in that case, uh, land cover information is the most important thing, I think. So in the early stage, we have a pilot project of monitoring uh, Imja Glacier Lake with a collaboration of uh, a lot of organizations like uh, NARO, Ishmut, and also when I was in the KO University, I involved in this project. So this is uh, coming from uh, Google Earth. So 2023, they already uh, installing such kind of image. So Glacier Lake is already here. But in 50 years ago, like uh, in 1969, you can see uh, that is also Corona satellite, but uh, in that times, uh, there is no lake. All of the valley is filled by glacier like this. It is easy to making uh, three dimensional, so uh, we would like to making such kind of three dimensional. So glacier lake is. Uh, not happening in, in 1969. So uh, it is uh, global warming issue uh, making uh, glacier melting and the homing the glacier lake. It affect on the glacier lake outpost flood in downstream site. So we discussing that uh, we would like to providing the internet and uh, social infrastructure with the collaboration of NLAN and also providing a wireless center network with a collaboration of narrow teams like uh, hiraoji san and uh, inumiya san for the environment monitoring. And also we'd like to providing for the disaster management a rewarding system is needed. So hiraoji san already uh, showing that uh, it work in a very short period, almost half years in the world. So we are setting up a three hope to the wireless network. And uh, we also making a simulation of a glacier like outburst flood uh, with a collaboration of each mode. But nowadays, uh, UNDP making a such kind of a civil engineering. So they uh, successful to lowering of uh, water level of uh, glacial lake. So there is already uh, such kind of a canal in the end moraine. So it is uh, controlling by our artificial uh, civil engineering at this moment. So uh, we, where are we going in uh, Himalayan mountainside? from the viewpoint of uh, sustainable development. It is a very interesting uh, uh, photography exhibition in uh, Bokara's Mountain Museum. They compare uh, 150 years ago in Sitrand and also present uh, 
Nepal, for example. It is almost same landscape, and uh, so there is uh, same such kind of uh, housing, and also the children naked food is uh, arbiting for the laborers. So how to move this kind of thing? In the case of Switzerland, uh, they are dramatically changed. They're making such kind of a transportation system. And uh, uh, this is a tourism site. And also a very uh, calm around, you see, ready. So where are we going in such kind of uh, high mountain site in Nepal? That is a problem, I think. So, for example, that as uh, far as uh, transportation, so the Hirafuji san mentioned about the transportation of a big uh, battery uh, energy system like that. It is uh, flying cars. In fact, uh, in Osaka 2035, there was, there will be a world exposition in that times we would like to making a demonstration of a flying cars in the implementation of flying cars there is already a lot of candidate of thing so i think such kind of a flying car is more popular in near futures so how to affect on a high mountain site in nepal not only uh, uh, combining of uh, big material, but also the, I think uh, dramatically changes happening in, uh, from the viewpoint of the development. As for well uh, ecosystem management, we also Japan is uh, now promoting of uh, Satama initiative. Japan is also facing of, uh, a lot of uh, depopulation issues uh, of uh, aging society and also affect on uh, climate change issues. So we would like to have a recovering of uh, certain situation that is a long term interaction between the people and uh, nature and environment. So the, in, I think uh, in Nepal, Nepal we would like to have a such kind of uh, long people, long in time interaction design with nature. That is problem. So in Japan is now a promoting of a circular and ecological economies, not only on the countryside, but also total land of Japan. That in that case, integrating of the cyber space and physical space is a very important thing. So that is the uh, reason why to make a presentation in the APAND, I think. So as far well as uh, information technology, from my background of geospatial and remote sensing, so there is already a lot of uh, geospatial information. And for example, in uh, Hindu Kush Himalayas, Ishmod already setting up uh, mountain environmental regional, regional information system mainly. And also the NASA providing of uh, Sabir uh, Himalaya project. So I think uh, watershed management by using such kind of digital information is a very important thing in the high mountain region. That so for the mountain development and climate change adaptation, that is a very important such kind of ITCs. And I want to uh, providing the uh, drones. I have uh, some collaboration with uh, Indian Himalaya, like using this kind of uh, drone, fixed plane type of drones. So we are using Indian, Indian Himalayas like this and uh, making of uh, three dimension. This is uh, one of the avalanche studies. That is an important uh, road network combining from India to Pakistan, Karakoram highways. So avalanche, how to uh, making of, uh, avoiding of avalanche by using of that kind of three-dimensional model is needed. 
And another example is uh, the was uh, global human settlement layers. At this moment, we are using a lot of satellite image and uh, we're making analyzing by using uh, deep learning methodology to setting up uh, global human settlement layers. For example, European population now providing such kind of information. It is a 2000 settlement layer near Katumans in, in Nepal. This is the 2010 and this is the 2002nd, 20s. And uh, they also projecting of uh, 2030s. So we'd like to use such kind of information for the sustainable development goal. So that is one of our conclusion is, I think uh, by using a geospatial information and remote sensing technology, we would like to providing a uh, digital house that is uh, connecting uh, cyberspace and physical space. This is a communication platform and uh, one of the collaboration platform. By using this platform, we would like to discussing of a new project in high mountain regions, how to making a uh, sustainable development goal uh, in the basis of uh, science evidence. That is our conclusion. Thank you for making the presentation. Thank you. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, fukui -san. Any comments or any questions, please? No question? Oh. <laughs> Any question? Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yes. I'm Masayuki Hirafuji. Um, yeah. you, you introduce a fixed wing drone. Yes. Uh, how high it can reach? It is, I think, uh, in that case, uh, I think uh, 200 meters high mm -hmm. uh, in this case, but uh, we already making a uh, fixed type of the drone, fixed wing type of the drone. In that case, one of the high altitude, almost uh, 1,500 meters height mm -hmm. in uh, Hokkaido in Japan, we have experienced it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, six. Is it difficult? Yeah. But uh, I think it is uh, from the surface of uh, land. I think I think it is possible in a uh, fixed wing type of a drone in high mountain mountain areas, I think. Okay. There is no problem of flying. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, actually, the airplanes and fly over 10,000 meters or something, so should it be? Yes. Uh, Pukui san, uh, this is Prashant. Yes. From nice to meet you again, Gary. Nice to meet you, Jum. So, uh, <laughs> as uh, Hirafuji san uh, said, that, 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 that fixed drone uh, looks very interesting to deploy in this Himalayan region. Uh, we have uh, some experience for those areas to deploy the drone because uh, those areas are quite, you know, narrow and then uh, there is a lot of maybe uh, uh, the hill region. So maybe that, I don't know where how it's working there in uh, Karkum area, but I think pretty much uh, the same as like Namche or something like that, right? I yeah. guess so. Yes, it's no problem. We can using that. For example, that uh, we already have experience in Bhutan. It is uh, about uh, six thousand uh, meter height altitude, so it is uh, applicable already using to making a three dimensional terrain model by fixed type of the drone. Okay, that is only for the taking pictures. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay.
all night uh, 10 32 so i think okay okay san thank you very much yeah you, you. should you should, you should have come here yeah i reserve i would like to <laughs> next time thank you okay. please thank enjoy you. <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much thank okay. you okay so let's conclude this session and thank you very much for joining and uh, we are going to start the, the second session at uh, at 11 right thank you, thank you. Thank you.